Okay, so I want to talk about an additional kind of way to classify some functional groups, right? So we're going to be learning three new terms here. Those terms are primary, secondary, and tertiary. And I just want to make sure we understand those definitions. So there are four main functional groups that we're going to see where we really need to understand these terms of primary, secondary, and tertiary. Those are alcohols, alkyl halides, amines, and amides. So let's draw some structures here. All right, so we can sort of understand the definition. So I'm going to draw an example of a primary alcohol. All right, so this is an example of a primary alcohol. And what primary means is that the carbon that's attached to the OH is only attached to one carbon. Therefore, it's also attached to two hydrogens. Okay? So the, when we talk about primary, that means that the carbon, the carbon attached to this OH here is really only attached to one carbon and two hydrogens. All right? That's the same... Um, basically same type of structure if you have an alkyl halide, all right? So if I draw some alkyl halide here, here I'm drawing an alkyl chloride. If we say this is a primary, it means that the carbon that's connected to this chlorine is only connected to one carbon directly. Obviously, there's more carbons over here, but we're talking about one bond attachment. Okay, so this carbon in blue is attached to a carbon and two H's via one bond. This carbon here in blue is connected to two H's and again one carbon just looking through one bond. These chains can extend out, right? But we're just looking at one bond attachments. Secondary, right? So let's draw a secondary alcohol. So here we have a secondary alcohol. Again, that means that the carbon that's attached to this OH, this carbon is attached to one, two carbons, and then one hydrogen, okay? And we're just again talking about what it's directly attached to, directly attached to. So if we draw an example of a secondary alkyl halide, here I'm drawing an alkyl bromide, it means that the carbon that's attached to the bromine is directly attached to one carbon, two carbons, and then one hydrogen. Right? Secondary means these two carbons directly attached. This chain here can be as long as we want, right? So that can have one carbon, two carbons, 27 carbons. It just doesn't matter, right? We're only looking at one attachment here. So if we talk about tertiary, now that carbon that's attached to the OH is going to be attached to three carbons directly. So here I'll draw a tertiary alcohol. So again, the carbon that's attached to the OH is now directly attached to one, two, three carbons. And of course, we remember that right carbon makes four bonds, so this carbon is attached to four different things. One is the OH, and then it's three other carbons. All right, so if we draw a tertiary alkyl halide here, we'll draw an alkyl fluoride. Again, the carbon that's attached to that fluorine is directly attached to three other carbons and no hydrogens. Okay? So you'll see when we're talking about functional groups, we will sort of use these terms, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay, so alcohols and alkyl halides are really treated um, the same. Amines and amides are a little bit different, so I'm gonna draw a line here, okay, and now show some examples of primary, secondary, and tertiary amines and amides, okay? Now it's gonna be different because the functional groups we had be 
above, the alcohol OH, the chlorine, can only form one bond, but the nitrogen can form three bonds. So let me draw out a primary amine. Now we're going to be counting how many carbons are attached to the nitrogen. So see here you see the nitrogen is attached to two hydrogens directly, and again directly to one carbon. That makes this a primary amine. It's a primary amine. Okay, what about a primary amide, right? It's going to be very similar. Here's my C double bond O, NH2, right? So this nitrogen, now we're looking at the nitrogen. The nitrogen in blue is connected to two H's, right? And then it's connected to one carbon. That makes it primary. So we're looking at direct attachments. This chain and how many carbons they have doesn't matter. Okay, if we look at secondary, all right, so let's look at a, a secondary amine. And here I'll draw in the lone pair here. Again, it means that the nitrogen here, right, remember nitrogen forms three bonds and has one lone pair. That nitrogen is now directly attached to two carbons, and then of course only one hydrogen in this case, right? Nitrogen is directly attached to two carbons, and then just one H, right? For a primary amide, we're going to see the same thing. That nitrogen is now going to be connected to directly to two carbons. There's one on the left, there's one on the right, and then it's still connected to one hydrogen that makes that nitrogen secondary. And then our last com column is when we have a tertiary. So here I'm gonna draw a nitrogen. Now our nitrogen is connected to three carbons and no hydrogen. So there's carbon one, carbon two, and carbon three. Again, we're looking at direct attachments. When we talk about our tertiary amide, C double bond O connected to N, that N is now connected to two, two other carbons, right? So if we look at this nitrogen in blue, it's connected to one, two, three carbons directly, and that makes it tertiary. So it's sort of important to understand there's really a dividing line here for alcohols and alkyl halides, we're counting how many carbons are directly attached to the carbon adjacent to the OH, the carbon adjacent to the bromine. Okay, for nitrogens, we're counting how many carbons are directly attached to the N itself.